All right, so let's do number 13 here in 2, 4. Okay, so this is again a piecewise function. And so what that means is they're going to give us the, the graph in pieces, in pieces. So let me just draw the big graph. What I suggest, these are often tricky for people. I've had people from my other section uh, last couple, of, well, today in my office, I've had two or three people ask me, about them. It's easy to get confused. Make sure you're getting the big idea as I talk about a piecewise function. What it means is basically the y, the f of x is the y, right, is x plus 7 when x is between negative 4 and 1. But it's just 7 when x is 1, and it's negative x plus 6 when x is bigger than 1. In other words, it's different things in different places. Does that make sense? So let's put that on the graph. What, what, what is the, the crucial nature? Where's the separation? It's at negative 4 and at positive 1, and these are also just positive 1. So that means x is negative 4. Let's go there. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and positive 1. I'm going to put a wall there. Now, that's not an asymptote line. You don't really have to put that on your graph, but I think it might help you to think right about, about what we're doing on this problem. It's my suggestion. So I'm saying on a piecewise graph, which is, you know, not everything we do. We're going to, you know, in a few minutes, we'll start doing a whole bunch of graphs that are not piecewise. But this is piecewise, meaning it's in different pieces, right? It's different functions in different places. It's got the big curly bracket thing, right? It's a piecewise. So what that means, it's going to be some kind of graph on the left, some kind of graph in the middle, and some kind of graph on the right. Actually, it doesn't exist to the left, so it's really just going to be the middle and the right. How do I know that? Well, just, just look at simply what it says there. It says, let me kind of erase some of the, oops, I didn't erase, <laughs> erase some of all my marks here. Let's take a look. It says when x is between negative 4 and 1, which is the middle zone, huh? It's x plus 7. So right in here, we've got to do y equals x plus 7. I would suggest just writing the section headings. And then to the right of 1, which is over here, it's y equals negative x plus 6 to the right of 1. Do you see that? See what I'm saying? It'll be here. It'll be that function in the middle. It'll be the other function, negative x plus 6 to the right. And right at x equals 1, right on that wall, the middle wall, it's going to be at 7. The y is 7. So that means over 1 up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. That means there's a dot right there. Everybody see how I came up with that over 1 up 7 dot? They directly told me that in the table. Are you seeing that? They said when x is 1, y is 7. They said over 1 up 7 is a dot, didn't they? Do you see that? So you're getting the big idea of a piecewise graph. It's one graph in one section, one graph in another section. And I'm just following what they say over here. So this, this X stuff is super important. I know a lot of times we don't, it, a lot of times it doesn't matter, but in these piecewise graphs, it matters a lot. So you really need to pay attention to what they're saying about the X. They're saying when X is between negative 4 and 1, you've got to use the X plus 7 function. When it's right at 1, you've got to do 7. When it's to the right of 1, you've got to do negative X plus 6. Okay. So what do I do over here, left of negative 4? Nothing. There's no graph at all over there. Nothing at all. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to, right in this middle section, I'm going to plug, I'm going to make an xy chart. And the y is x plus 7. Getting in the way of that 1 there. x plus 7. Very good to there. So y is x plus 7. And I, Now what x values am I going to plug into it? x values between negative 4 and positive 1. Nothing else. Like, like for example, it would be wrong to go, I'll plug in 1 and I'll plug in 2 and I'll see what I get. No, not 2. 2 over here. That's not in his zone. He doesn't exist at 2. Some other function should be plugged into for 2, but not this function, right? You should only plug into this function when you're, between, when you're doing x values between negative 4 and positive 1. That's what he's saying. 
Does that make sense? That's the mistake everybody makes. I know all of you can make tables, no problem, and draw graphs. That's not the problem. Nobody has a problem with that. The problem they have is they plug in the wrong x values. That's it, today. That, those are the two questions I've had, right? And when I clarified and said, no, see, see, see what it says here? Only x values between negative 4 and 1. They're like, oh, that's it. So watch, so watch that. So pay attention to that. It's saying you can only plug into x plus 7 when you have x values between negative 4 and 1. Nothing else. That's only in this middle zone can you use that function. Don't, don't try to use him any outside of that zone. It won't be the truth. Okay. So let's do that then. So um, I can't plug in 1 and 2, but I can plug in. What can I plug in? I can plug in. Um, yeah, I, I could plug in 0 and 1, but you know what you should do? Do the two walls. So I'm going to plug in negative 4 and positive 1. Those are the two walls, right? That'll be the most useful information to know what it does right at those walls. You always want to know what it does at the borders. That's the most helpful information. So I'm going to do negative 4, and this is positive 1. I can squeeze in a 1 without making this too messy. Negative 4 and positive 1. You need to know what it's doing at those borders. Okay, so now you, um, if you're looking close, you might be thinking, wait a minute, Mr. Heron, it, it says less than 1. You can't do 1. You're right. So I'm going to circle the 1 because really it's going to be an open dot there, huh? But I still need to do 1 because it's going to get, yes, it's got, it can't do 1. It's not equal to 1. It's not right on one exactly, but it's infinitesimally close to one. It gets to point nine 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 nine, basically gets to one. So I got I still got to check one. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Let's pl let's plug those in and, and we'll keep going. So plug in negative four. Negative four plus seven three. Plug in one one plus seven eight, but circle it. So that means over one up eight. That's that's right up here. Right, that, that one is over 1, up 8, open dot. And back 4, up 3, 1, 2, 3, right there. Back 4, up 3, solid dot. Connect those two dots. There's that graph in that section. Everybody see what I did? I just got two dots. Back 4, up 3, solid dot, over 1, up 8, open dot, because it doesn't quite hit the wall, right? It said only x values less than 1. But it gets really, really close to 1. So open dot there. And over one up eight. Is that okay for the left section? Is that making sense what I'm doing? A, a common mistake I see is people will go, wait, 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 Mr. This one says less than one, so I can't do one, so I'll I'll stop at zero. Don't think that way. Don't think whole number-ish. Don't just think in whole numbers. There's a whole bunch of numbers between zero and one, right? Being less than one doesn't mean you're zero. It means you're 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.9999999. So you're basically one. You're basically one. So we have to get all the way to one. Does that make sense on that? Okay. So, so we get those two, and uh, now we have to do the right section. So over here in the right section, what, what function am I going to use in the right section? Well, let me. I'm going to use the negative x plus 6, huh? So I'm going to make an xy table. Uh, for this section, all I need is two dots. Two dots will be plenty. What, now, what x's value should I plug in here? Circle one and two. Yeah, now should I go, hey, let's just do zero and one. No, that's wrong, huh? Why is that wrong? Why can I not do zero? Yeah, this is only for x's to the right of one, right? He said greater than one. So, so you can't take your eye off the ball. You can't stop looking at those x restrictions. That's the mistake people make. Anybody that has trouble with piecewise, it's because they're not noticing the x's carefully enough, right? You can only use this function for x values 1 or bigger. So not 0, huh? Not 0. 1 or bigger. Yeah, so let's just do 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Definitely want to do 1 because, again, you always want the wall. You always want to know what it does at the wall. So when you plug in 1 to the function, is it on the screen? No, it's going to be way off the screen. So this is the function negative here. I gotta move the whole thing over, don't I? I always forget about that projector problem up there. So, alright, x, y, what am I doing? Uh, 1 and 2, huh? And this is negative x plus 6. Is that still on? Oh, I can't believe it. They're squeezing half my screen. Alright. Negative x plus 6. Barely. Alright. Plug in 1. Negative 1 plus 6. What is that? 5. 
And um, negative 2 plus 6, what is that? 4. Good. So over 1, up 5. Where's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here. Solid. That, is that solid or open? Oh, I should have circled those guys because, yeah, it said only x greater than 1, not equal, huh? So that should have been, um, that should have been open. Over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. Over 1, up 5. And then over 2, up 4. Right there. Boom. And there it goes. This is over 2, up 4. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Over 1, up 5. And over 2, up 4. And we're done. We have the graph. Does that make sense on that? How I did that? So I used the negative x plus 6 function to the right. I used the x plus 7 function in the middle. I just made tables, but only plugging in the allowable x values to them. Hey, why, why does this one, like, stop here with a solid dot on the left? But this one has an arrow saying it's going to the right forever. Why? Yeah, because it says x greater than 1. That means everything, 1, 2, 3, 10 million, 14 billion. It just keeps on going, right? Whereas the left one says, no, I stop at negative 4. So it's a, it's a hard wall at negative 4. It stops right there. Make sense on that? So then they'll ask you a bunch of questions. In fact, if you notice, the first question was actually domain. I would not try to do domain until I first had the graph. You know, the picture is worth a thousand words. You know, the graph is worth a thousand questions. Easy. So just get the graph, get that before your eyes, and then answer all their silly questions. They'll all be easy now with, once you have the picture. Find the domain. So what's the domain? Domain is the width coverage. Huh? When you're looking at the graph, it's left edge, right edge, isn't it? So do we just go, oh, that's easy. You want to know the domain of this picture? Left edge, right edge. So what's the left, what's the domain? What's the left edge of this graph? Yeah, negative 4 with a bracket, solid, right? What's the right edge? Infinity. It goes forever to the right, right? There's graph all through here. There's graph in the middle. Uh, there's graph here. By the way, do you notice why there's one solid dot and two open? It's because it's got to pass the vertical line test. It's got to be a function. You're never going to have two solid dots straight vertical or it would fail the vertical line test. It wouldn't be a function. So they're always going to set it up like that. And then it goes, so it keeps going. goes right forever. So negative 4 to infinity is the domain. Then they're going to ask, later on they'll say, um, don't they ask for range? Yeah, right here. Find the range. So what's the range? Let's just do that right now. Range is the vertical. Range is up and down, you know, bottom, comma, top. Range, bottom, comma, top. So what's the bottom? How, how low does this graph go? Negative infinity. Yeah, how do you know? This is going down, 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 and right, forever. So it goes to any depth. It goes down as low as you'd want to go. How high does it go? Eight, but open dot at eight, huh? The highest point is eight with an open dot. So it would be negative infinity, eight, both parentheses because it's open dot. doesn't quite hit the eight. Is that good? Negative infinity, eight. That's the range. Um, they're going to ask for what? Intercepts. Can you see the intercepts? Like, where does this graph hit the um, axes? Um, well, yeah. Looks like it hits right here. And probably somewhere over here, huh? I got to find that. You with me? So I'm going to go to a new screen and try to find that. So, or actually, I'm just going to start erasing things. You guys got that down? You can watch the YouTube later. So uh, I'm going to erase this to make some room to actually find those intercepts now. So, the, so I guess we do have to do a little bit more work here. So we're looking for the intercepts. And um, we can tell one's right here. Let's find that one first. That one is um, a what? A y. It hits the y-axis. So this is a y-intercept. Let me kind of erase this mess, too. Okay, so I'm going to try to find this right there, y-intercept. How do I find it? Well, whenever you find a y-intercept, you set x to 0, don't you? Remember the opposite letter is always 0 for an intercept? So at that, right, that point is over 0, up something, right? It's an x0. What's the y? I don't know. How do I find the y? You plug into the appropriate function. In that region, it's the x plus 7 function, huh? So plug in 0 for x, 
y is 7. So that must be the point over 0, up 7. We good on that one? Found the y-intercept by plugging x is 0 into the right function. Now, how do we find the x-intercept, which is right about there, wherever that is, right, where it hits the x-axis? You oh, set y to 0. Again, remember, intercepts, you set the opposite letter 0. Because that point is over something, I don't know, up 0, isn't it? That point is over, I don't know, up 0. Its y value is 0. Its height is 0 when you hit the x-axis, huh? So the y value is 0. What equation do I plug into? This one. Because in that region to the right, in the right section, we're plugging into negative x plus x. So you've got to plug into the right function, don't you? The correct function. So, um, oh, I'm supposed to make y 0, aren't I? So make y 0 there. And then solve for x. How do you solve for x? Move the 6 over, divide by negative 1, x is 6. So that's the point over 6, up 0. And we found the two intercepts. We good? So it's all about knowing which function you're supposed to be using when you're in the middle or the right. That's why I put them right at the top so there would be no chance. That's what I encourage you to do is put the wall in there and put those functions right at the top so you know which function you're dealing with in which section. Questions? All right, that was a thorough hand. Okay, so there we go. So they're, they're giving us this picture here. So this, this section, 2.5, is all about how do you move graphs around. How do you move them, flip them, stretch them, compress them, all of that. So we'll get real serious about all that in 2.5. This is like my favorite section in the first, um, on the first exam. This is very valuable. So you do a good job on this section. You can really expand your ability to graph quite a bit. So um, these will be on the first part of the exam we take next week on Thursday. These will be on part one. You know, that exam is going to be in two parts, right, if I've been clear on that? Part one, no graphing calculator. So these kind where you have to graph by hand. And part two, you get to use a graphing calculator. So you'll need to do these by hand. So you might want to bring two calculators to the exam, a, a graphing and then a non-graphing you can use in part one. So, all right, so how do we do it? So basically, um, that's some kind of x squared function, isn't it? It's a U-shape, but there's been a couple of things done to it. It's been flipped down, and it's been moved up. What is that, up at 4? Because the, the marks, yeah, it looks like it's up at 4, because the, the jumps go by 2, don't they? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that must be, it's up at 4, and it's turned upside down. So can you all tell it's this one? Right? It's y equals minus x squared plus 4. Huh? That plus 4 is an up 4, and that minus sign flips it, flips it down. Have I talked a little bit about that? I can't remember. I get the two sections confused. Have I talked about minus signs? Have I talked about an X effector and a Y effector yet? Okay, let's go on. And I'll, well, let me, let me just, um, yeah, let me, let me show. Let me, let me write something over here. So basically, when you, if you have X plus 4 squared, and let me move it over. What, what, what would that do? What, 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 is, what if we had x plus 4? What would that do to the u shape, that plus 4? Does anybody know? That would move it left 4. And if you had x minus 4, it would go right. Left and right do the opposite of what you would think. Positive is left, negative is right. Whereas if you have the 4 out here, it's up 4. And if you have the 4 out, a negative 4, it's down 4. Yeah, so let me start there. So there's some basic information about moving graphs. All right, so take a look. Two of those movements are, are right and left. They're sideways, aren't they? And the other two are vertical. They're up, down. How's that work? Well, um, when you have like 4s and whatever, you know, numbers in there, in the equation, the first thing you need to determine is that number, is it going to have like an x effect, like a sideways effect, because the x-axis goes sideways, or is it going to have a y effect, like an up-down kind of effect? How do you know? Well, it depends where the 4 is, or whatever the number is you've got. If the 4 is in the parentheses, 
then it's in X's little world. It's kind of like, you know, walk a mile in my shoes. Kind of, you know, you're, you're in their little world, right? So if the 4 is in the parentheses, it's, it's going to have a sideways effect because it's an X effector is how I call it. That's not an official name. But it's going to have an X effect. Is what it's going to have a right-left kind of thing. And X always does the opposite of what you would think. So positive is actually left and negative is actually right, which is the opposite of what we would naturally think. Whereas if the 4 is outside of the parentheses, like these bottom two, it's outside of the parentheses, then it's going to have, the, these are Y effectors. They're not in X's world. They're not in X. These 4s are Y effectors. And, they, and Y just does what you would normally expect. Positive is up, negative is down, like you would normally expect. Make sense? On that, so that's the base. There's more to it, but that'll get us started. So that's how I knew. Oh, and this this minus sign is is that in there with x? No, this would be in there with x, and it's not. It's so that's so. My point is that negative sign is a y effector as well. That's why it flipped it down. Had a y, a vertical effect, didn't it? Make sense? We good? Okay, so absolute value. So, uh, you guys, uh, do, do you know the absolute value graph? Y equals absolute value of X. That's the V. Did I put the basic six graphs up? Yes. yes. I did. Okay, so you know the basic six. Okay. The absolute value is the V. All right, now, the question is, what's been done to this one? Well, it's been flipped down, and it's been moved left one. So, what's going to do all that? Yeah, do you see it's this bottom one, right? Because negative, so the plus one, that's in there with x. It's not parentheses this time, but it's like parentheses. It's the same thing. It's in x's little world. So this plus one is a left one. Remember, x has the opposite. So that's an x. Whereas if, if, if it was like this, what, what would that kind of a one do? Wouldn't be left one. What would it be? That'd be up one, because that would be a Y effect now. He's not in X's world, therefore he's not an X, he's a Y, if he was like that. That'd be up one. That's not what we have here. That's not, not our case. So this is left one, and of course this is flip, flips it down again, because that's a Y. That's outside of the brackets, or the absolute values, right? So it's a Y thing. It's not an X. So the main thing is, ask yourself, is it in X's world or out of X's world? If it's in there, it's an X, a sideways thing. If it's out of X's world, it's a Y, it's an up-down kind of thing. So this is a flip down, this is a left one, that's what we got. Is that making sense? Um, it's, it's just going up a little faster is the deal. Okay, so we've got the normal y equals x squared, and then it looks like, it looks like this one is moving um, up fast, right? See, this is over 1, it's already at 2, over 2, it's already at 4. It's going up fast. So it's this one, isn't it? It's y equals 2x squared. That 2, you tell me, is that 2 an x effector or a y effector? This 2 right here. Is this 2 in x's world? No. No, an x effector would look like this. That 2 would be in x's world. That's not what we have. Right? This is a y effector. And that's not adding 2, that's multiplying by 2, that's going to be, that's going to stretch it vertically. That's going to be a, ver it's going to grab the U shape and pull it up twice as fast. That's a vertical effect of multiplying by 2. So it's not, add so notice adding and subtracting move the graph, multiply and dividing stretch or compress the graph. Does that make sense? Let me, in fact, let me just write these out for you now. That would probably be the most helpful thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to check that card. You better not have too much helpful information. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, you can write anything you want on that card. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, so let, me, um, let me show these two. So this is vertical stretch times 2. This is vertical stretch compression, like it pushes it down, you know, times a half, it's, it's half as tall as it was, versus if, um, 
if you have the plus two like that, or even the plus two in the front, that that's up to, that moves it. That's different than stretching it. Everybody see what I'm saying? Everybody see that difference? It's a movement, not a stretch. Not a stretch. So there's a difference between, you know, this, this U shape is, it's still centered at the origin, huh? It hasn't moved, it's just been stretched. Everybody see that difference? So multiplying and dividing, multiplying and dividing, multiplying and dividing, stretch or compress, versus adding, subtracting, move it, right? Add, subtract, move a graph. So adding and subtracting, move a graph, multiplying, dividing, stretch or compress a graph without moving it leaving it anchored where it was, right? Just making it taller or shorter, right? Everybody seeing that? Let's add. You got that down? I'm going to go to a new sheet. Let's add. Let's add some information to that. So now, what if the 2x was in there like that? Or the half was in there like that? Now we already know, let me do the let me do what you already know. You already know if the plus two adding to or the minus two subtracting to was in X's world, what does this parentheses X plus two squared do to the graph? First off, it's adding, subtracting, so these are both movements, aren't they? These are both movements. Both these are gonna move it. They're not gonna stretch it or compress it. They're both gonna move it, and they're both in there with X, so it's sideways. They both are going to have a sideways movement. And remember, X is, can I put it in caps? All ways, not sometimes, but always opposite. Y is normal, but X is always, always. And it's so easy to forget that. Always the opposite of what you would naturally think it would do. All right, so, so let's go down here. What does this one do now? What does X plus 2 in the parentheses do? Left 2. And the, and the minus is right, because, it's, again, it's opposite. Minus is right, and plus is left. Okay, now, with all that, you guys feeling sharp this morning? Did you wake up thinking, I'm ready, I'm in a math mood? <laughs> That's what I think. All right. All right. What do you think that multiply by 2 in the parentheses? It's in the parentheses, so it's an X, right? It is an X. It's not, it's not like this. That one we did a minute ago, that was a Y. That was... Vertical stretch times two, wasn't it? Right? We did, that a, we did that a minute ago because that's a Y, right? The one we did a minute ago on the other sheet, when you have the two outside of the parentheses, it's a vertical. It's not a Y. It's an, I mean, it's not an X, it's a Y. But now the one I'm looking at, the two is in the parentheses. So it's not vertical. It's sideways, right? It's an X. And what do you think that times two is going to do, given what you know about X? always opposite. What's multiplying by 2 going to do? Isn't it all clear now? No? It's going to compress it sideways. It's going to be half as big as it was sideways. And what is the half going to do? Stretch sideways times 2. Opposite, right? Opposite. So it does opposite in every sense. X always does opposite. All right. So there's, there's kind of the whole story, really. I mean, we'll get some details from there. But that's the whole story. Um, well, other than the negatives. But that's the story with, with regular numbers on what they do to a graph. So we have X things and Y things. And that's all about whether it's in there with X or it's not. And when I say in there, I mean in the parentheses, in the absolute values, in the square root, in the whatever that X is in. If it's in there with X, it's a sideways thing. If it's outside of X's little world, it's a vertical thing. It's a Y, right? And Y always does normal. X always does opposite. Adding, subtracting moves the graph, right? And multiplying, dividing stretches or compresses, stretches or compresses, but again, X always does the opposite. All right. So you want to keep all that together, and we'll play the game of name that graph. Number seven. Okay, so there we go. So why...
equals x squared. And they want me to go left one. Let me give you a second. You can do that. I'm sure with the greatest of ease. Move that thing left one. All right. Is it going to be like that? No. Is it going to be like that? No. No. What's it got to be? It's got to be in the parentheses, doesn't it? Now, is it like that? X is opposite. It's a plus one. That's the correct answer now. Right? Everybody with me? It's got to be in the parentheses because it's an X. The right left is X. So it's got to be in X's little world, and X is always opposite, so left is actually plus. Good? Getting the hang of this? All right. Let's try that one. Okay, so Y equals X cubed up A. Let me give you a second. Try that one, X to the third power up A. All right, what's it going to do? Is it just going to add 8? Yeah. Just like that? Because it's, it's, not, it's not in there like that because that would make it an X thing. It's, not, it's, a, it's up, which means it's a vertical. It's a Y, huh? So it's not in the parentheses. It's outside the parentheses. And Y is normal, so plus is up. Good? You like this? So it'll make you a powerful grapher. This, this, this a bit, if you get this down... You'll be able to look at a function and quickly know a lot about the graph. This really will expand your ability. <coughs> okay, so y equals x plus 2 squared. So they're giving me a starting, starting function like that. And then they're saying reflected about the x-axis. Reflected about the x-axis. Now, you got to, that can really trick you. That, that's, that's just really tricky. Let me draw a graph. What if I have some graph, whatever, you know, blah, 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 okay, and I want to reflect it about the x-axis. This, this is the x-axis right here. What does it mean to reflect about the x-axis? It means the x-axis is like a mirror. Or the x-axis is like a rotisserie, a handle. You, you grab it and you turn. <coughs> right? So I'm going to grab right here and turn that thing. And where's the graph going to go? Well, it's going it's to go down there like that, huh? Get the idea? So is it actually a sideways jump or a vertical jump? It's a vertical, even though it said x-axis. That's the first trick. It's the opposite of what you would normally think, right? If you didn't think deep, you'd think x-axis sideways. But the problem is it means you're grabbing the x-axis and turning it. Or the x-axis is a mirror, and it's reflecting across the x, which means it's actually a vertical flip. So it's a y thing, really, isn't it? So that's the first thing we've got to get straight. Whenever they say rotate about whatever axis, it's the opposite of that. Rotate about the x-axis is, is a y thing, Rotate about the y-axis would be an x-step, wouldn't it? All right, so get that straight. So it's a vertical flip. So, okay, so let's do a y thing, a vertical flip to that. Now, what flips graphs, I bet you know? What flips them? Negative signs. Negative uh, multiply by a negative number. Any negative number. Um, multiply times ne yeah, negative number. Any negative number. Any negative I'll just write by... Uh, any negative number flips the thing. So multiply by a negative number. All right, so that means you take the equation and you put a negative out there. Why out there? Why don't I put it, like, in the parentheses like that? Why would, like, yeah, it's, it's the X, Y thing. If I put it in the parentheses, that would be an X thing. And this is not, we agreed it's a Y thing. It's a vertical thing. So it's not that way. It's out there in the Y world, huh? And we're done. That's what they want you to type in. Good? All right. Okay, so try this one. Y equals X cubed horizontally stretched factor of 6. Let me give you a second.
Okay, so what's it going to be, guys? One six x to the third. Yeah, it's got to be like that, doesn't it? Good. Or it wouldn't be an x effect. Everybody with me? Everybody seeing that? So, right, because it's got to be in the parentheses when it's an x thing. If you left it outside the parentheses, it would be a y thing, right? So it's got to be in the print. All x things have to be in x's world. So it's got to be in the parentheses, and x does opposite. So instead of times 6, you know, stretch is normally times 6, we would think, right? But x is opposite, so it's 1 6 in the parentheses. Is that good? Are you getting the hang of playing this game? Name that too, name that graph. Can you do that? Questions I can answer? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm kind of being scribbly there. Let me make it neater. You're, you're totally right. What's the rule for the horizontal stretch? So there's how it looks. So, hor anything horizontal, if I did this, if I wrote it like this, that would be vertical because that's not in the parentheses. So let me address that first off, right? Anytime you have something outside the parentheses, outside of whatever's being done to X, absolute value, third power, second power, root, whatever, whatever's on X, if the number is outside of X's world, he's not experiencing with X what X is experiencing, then he's a Y thing. So that would be a Y thing. But we've already decided horizontal, that's a sideways. That's an X thing. So we need it to be in the parentheses, huh? And then, normally a stretch, we would think stretch, that's bigger, times 6, but X does the opposite, so it's divided by 6. Or 1, 6. That, that's the same. You could write it the other way. You could say x over 6 cubed. That's the same answer. That's the same thing as 1, 6 times x. Dividing by 6 or multiplying by 1, 6. Either way, same thing. That'll actually stretch it horizontally. 6 times as wide as it was before. Good? Is that good? All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. This will be a fun one. All right. You ready? So we're going to go through three steps. So we're going to take the y equals square root of x. And we'll, let's draw pictures as we go. We don't have to. They're not requiring it. But there's the, that one I call the firework because he's the only one that doesn't go both ways. And he ends up having some special characteristics because of that. So remember him in particular. y equals the square root of x. He's the only one that only goes one way. He stops and does not go left. Why not? Why, all the rest of the graphs go left and right, left and right, left and right. Why does this one only go to the right? Because you can't put negative numbers in the square root, right? Square root and negative numbers are imaginary, aren't they? So you can't plug negative x's in here, and you only allow zero and positive. Okay, so there's the original. Now we're going to do different things to him. What, what's for shift down nine units? So go ahead and try that one. Do a down, do a down nine to the equation. <clears throat> Y equals down nine. Everybody got an answer? What do you think? Square root of x minus nine. Square root of x. Is the minus nine in the root or out? Uh, exactly. And that's that's important. Right? If you let the root go like that, that would be wrong because then that why? You tell me. Why would that be wrong? That would be an x thing now. Now he's in x's little world. That would be a right left kind of thing. Not an up-down kind of thing. So, yeah, you're totally right. You've got to keep the minus 9 on the outside. Then it's a y thing, and it's down 9. Negative 9 is down 9. We good? All right, so that would, that would take the square root graph and move it down. It'd be down here at negative 9, huh? All right, let's do the next one. Um, are we supposed to add to it as we go or just start from the beginning? In? Find a function that, that is finally graphed after the following are applied. Oh, they, just, they want us to do all three and then one answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize. Okay, so that's just the first step. So down nine, and now reflect x-axis, okay? How do I reflect about the x-axis? The x-axis is here. So to reflect about the x-axis is actually a y flip, isn't it? Right? Because it's going to go like this, isn't it? You with me? You grab the x-axis and you turn it. The x-axis is like a rotisserie on a barbecue or something, right? You grab it and you, you flip it there on the x-axis. 
You guys tracking with me? That's what an x-axis, to reflect about the x-axis, to treat the x-axis like a mirror or a rotisserie. So it's actually a vertical flip. Remember, those are opposite. So reflect about this is a y flip, okay? So how do I do a y flip? Yeah, well, this one's super tricky. Uh, almost. You might think that's right. Probably based on everything I've said so far, you would think that's right. There's one more thing I need to tell you. That negative has to be in front of the whole thing, which will actually make that 9 at the back positive. Why? Because you've got to do negative y, right? And what does y equal? The whole right side, doesn't it? Y equals the whole right side. So when you negativize, is that a word? Negate. When you put the negative on Y, that means putting the negative on all that Y equals, not just the front part of what Y equals. Does that make sense on that? So you can write it this way, or you can just go ahead and distribute it. It doesn't matter. Math Excel, I think, will take it either way. But it's not negative root X minus 9. That would be wrong. Is that good? Does that make sense so far? Last step. Now reflect, whoops, I'm erasing things. Reflect about the y's. So reflect about the y-axis. And y-axis, here's the y-axis. That's grabbing the y-axis like a rotisserie, a mirror. It's going to go over this way, isn't it? It's a sideways. It's an x-flip, isn't it? So what's going to do that? Negative on just the x. We're done. Everybody see that? That's the, final answer. That's the final answer. After all those steps, we did all three things to it. Yeah, well, yeah, good question. Uh, a, no, a normal natural question, but wait a minute, you just said you can't have negatives in there. Remember, x is a variable. So in other words, I could plug negative x's in there, and negative negative would be positive. What that means is, yeah, this thing will not let you plug any positive x's in, will it? You plug in a positive x, then it'll be negative, and that can have negative in a root. In other words, this x doesn't go right. And sure enough, it doesn't. The graph goes left. It doesn't go right. It's exactly what we see. What was that last step you just did? You put a negative in front of the x and negative? Negative in front of the x. The last step is I just stuck that in. Yeah. Okay. Am I, am I answering your question? Yes. Mm. No, here, here's the graph right here. See where it's at? Positive 9. Want me to go through those reflections one more time? Um, yeah. The, the thing that, 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 that's confusing is that, remember the first step is we, the original graph was here, and then we moved it down 9. Okay? And then we, then we grabbed the x axis like a rotisserie and we flipped it. Here's the thing that confuses people. They, people think a lot of times, they think, okay, flip just means right where it's at, just flip it. No, that's not what flip means. Flip means flip about an axis. Grab the axis as a rotisserie or a mirror. So the flip will be, this is your flip, and this whole guy goes whoop, up to here, so he ends up becoming like this, doesn't he? Do you see that? It's a flip about the entire axis, not a flip, not a standing flip, right? Like, you know, some people could do that, just stand in place here, and then flip over back. I mean, I could do it right and demonstrate, but I need to show off. So I'm not going to show you. But you know what I mean. So, some people can do it. so it's not a standing flip. It's a rotation about the whole axis, right? right? That's not right, is it? The way you flip it? Oh, it's not. You're right. I got the concavity wrong. David? Right, David? David, right? Yes. Yeah, David. Right. Yeah, good observation, David. You're right. I am wrong. It's, uh, it's, it's like this, isn't it? Wait a minute, is that right? Yeah, it's like that. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's much better looking. Yeah, you can just picture, you took the paper and just flipped it over. Right? It would do that. That better? That good? And then the last step is flip about this axis, which puts it over there. So in the end, it's one step is positive 9, which we see. Complete agreement between equation and picture. All right. No, this is, uh, I was being like, they wanted it to have like, all three properties at the same time. So. Well, it's not, it's not at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's one done after the yeah. other, done after the other. Yeah, yeah. I, I, 
so. you don't have to find oh, you were thinking, yeah, I see, yeah. No, yeah, so it, through the process, it ends up being that way, yeah. All right. Okay, so I'll try that one. So y equals square root of x. They want you to do three things. Reflect about the x-axis, step one. Step two is down five, and then left three. All right, you want to try that? So see what you get in the end. Reflect about the x, then go down five, then go left three. First step's the trickiest. So remember, right on the screen, yeah, so if I have some kind of graph, I want to reflect about the x-axis, that's a vertical y flip, isn't it? The x-axis as a mirror makes a vertical flip. It's a y flip. So it's outside the root, isn't it? Everybody good with that? Because it's a y thing, not an x thing, even though it's to, to, to reflect about the x is a y flip, a vertical flip. So it's out there, and then the down 5 is a minus 5 outside the root again, because that's also up down. It's not in X's world. Neither, neither of these first two steps are in X's world. They're both Y things, right? They're up down, and then they're down 5, and then left 3. Now that's an X thing. What am I going to do? X plus 3, because X always says opposite. There's our equation. Is that good? We good with that? Yeah. Um, so, so for y, the negatives make you go down, and positives make you go up. But for, for x, positives make you go left. Right? Those are yeah, x does opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So y always does normal. Positive is right. Negative. Wait. Y. Y does normal. Positive is down. And x does opposite. Positive left. Negative. Good. And same thing with stretches and compressions. Yeah. All right. Okay. So they're telling me that x-intercepts are negative 3 and negative 2. So that's x is negative 3 and x is positive 2. And they want me to do something to the equation f of x plus 6. f of x plus 6. And they want me to find out where these x values are going to go. So can you do that real quick? So what is that x plus 6 in the parentheses going to do? What is this going to do? Is that an x thing or a y thing? Yeah, it's in the parentheses, so it's an x thing, huh? It's in x's world. So what's it going to do to this x value? Well, x always does the opposite. So it will... Subtract 6 from both those, won't it? Instead of adding 6, x always does the opposite. And so what you'll get is negative 9 and negative 4. Those are your two answers. It'll take both those x values and subtract 6, won't it? Because x does the opposite. It's all starting to make sense more and more. All right, I'm going to move on. If you don't get it, it's... Okay, so I want you to notice on this one they say interval. You've got to watch for those words, huh? When they say interval, that means the minus 7, 4, comma 4 are what? Are the x's, y's, x and y? What are those numbers? X. Both x's. That's not x, y, although it looks just like the way we normally write x, comma, y with the parentheses, huh? But how do I know it's x with x? Because of the word interval. Interval, in other words, they, they, what they're saying is from negative 7 to positive, there's some kind of a graph, and we're looking at a piece of the graph between negative 7 and 4. That's what they're, they're not even showing me the picture. Well, what are they telling me? They're telling me it's increasing, so really I'm not drawing, we know a little bit about the picture. We know that somehow it's going <laughs> up between, it's increasing between negative 7 and 4. David, do you have a comment or question? Why is it that we don't need the bracket? 
Um, yeah, it, it could be. It, remember, remember with intervals, I said it's irrelevant. We're talking about an interval. It doesn't really matter. You know, when you're saying it's increasing, because because right at one point you can't be increasing or decreasing, right? So whether we include negatives, you know, you don't understand what I mean. Like a change, there's a change. Right. It's got to be a change. Whenever you're talking about increasing, that means over a period of movement. So you can't talk about increasing at one point. So that's why, to me, on the on the test, I don't care whether for an interval you put brackets or parentheses because one dot is irrelevant to change. Yeah, like you're saying. Okay, so that's what they're basically saying. From negative 7 to 4, it's increasing. Okay, so what? Now what? And then they say, what's going to happen when you do f of x plus 6? So what's that going to do to both of those x values? Minus 6, huh? Because x always does the opposite. So it'll become minus 13 and minus 2. So the interval will be minus 13 to minus 2. I just want you to know they're both x values on that. All right, this only goes one way. Okay, so we have y equals the square root of x plus 5. And um, they, want it, they want us to graph it. Okay, now on the exam we're going to take next Thursday, we from today, um, it's not going to be multiple choice. You can take a look, you have the practice exam, right? Check, take, check it out. There will be probably three, there will be like three questions on part one, you know, the non-graphing calculator part, that ask you to graph things like this by hand. This is the main, those other questions were good that we just did, those other 18 questions that we just did, they're more like warm-up. This is the real, this is the real deal. This is what I'm really going to ask you to do on the exam. I mean, I might have one or two of those other ones. Take a look at the practice set. It'll be just like the practice exam. But the main thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give you three, probably three different questions, functions, and I'm going to ask you to just graph it. Just graph it for me. I won't say, is it right, left, up, you know, just say, show me on the picture. Give me a graph. So here's my suggestion for the easiest way to graph. I'm going to, in fact, what I'll say on the test is I'll say, find the center point, the center point, and one other Point. Yeah, find the center point and one other point. Now, what do I mean by the center point? Well, all of those six graphs I gave you the other day, they're all originally centered at the origin, aren't they? So, like, this, what, what is the square root graph? What does just the basic square root x look like? He's the firework, right? I always think it's a firework because it looks like you set a firework on the ground. It shoots off to the left. All right, so it looks like if it only goes one way. It's so a little firework graph. It's centered at the origin. They're all centered at the origin to start with. Now, the question is, what does the root of x plus 5 do to it? Well, you already know. Generally, what's that going to do to it? Left 5, huh? Because that 5 is in the root, so he's in x's world. So it's a right-left kind of thing, and x is opposite. So plus 5 is left 5. So if you're looking going, I think it's just going to go over here, left 5, you're totally right. That's exactly what it's going to do. Um, what I'll ask for on the test, as I'm saying here, is, is a center point and one other point and the graph. So let me show you how to do that. Now, this one's pretty easy. In a couple minutes, they're going to get really hard. They're going to put flips and shifts and like two or three things all in one. And it gets pretty tough to follow all the rules. I mean, I, mean, I gave you these rules, but the best thing to do is make it these two points. This is going to really make it a lot easier for you. All the rules about flips and shifts and compressions and all that... It's hard to follow all that when they have like two or three of those in the same problem. That's pretty tough to do. So instead, what I'm going to say, what I found is easiest for students over the years, is just making an XY table and just finding two points. The first one would be the center point. If you can find where the new center is, you've almost got it. Because you know the general look, it generally does the firework thing. So find the new center. Now, how do you find the new center? You guys... Track it with me. If I've been, you know, I'm always nervous in these long two-hour lectures. If I start to do the Charlie Brown voice for you, remember Charlie Brown, the wah wah wah. Am I wah wah wahing across for you now? If I have been, dial in with me now. This is all the rest of the stuff didn't matter, but now this matters. No, that matters too, but this really matters. How do you find the center point? You zero out the x zone. You find the center point by making the x zone become zero. What am I talking about? I'm talking about x's little world. Just what's in his little world. Now, this is a simple one. So what, what, what x do I plug in 
to make that little x world zero. Negative five. This one's easy. But I mean, like, even if they had, like, a one-third out here and a plus four, you know, which they'll do in a minute, you know, more stuff going on, you know, I would still just plug in negative five. So to hear what I'm saying and what I'm not saying, I'm just, I'm not saying make the whole thing zero. I'm just saying x's little zone zero. Just x's little zone. Right? If in negative five, even if they had the one-third and the four, would still make x's little world zero. Right? Why would it be zero? Why would it be one third times zero plus four? Why would it be four? So I'm not saying make y zero. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying make x's little world zero. That's where you'll find the new center point every time. So plug in x is negative five and um, to the to the function. And what is it? It's just it's just a simple root x plus five. So it's just going to be root of minus five plus five. It is just going to be zero in this simple case, but it won't always be. Good so far? Here, here it is. Here's that minus 5, 0 point. Just, that's the new center point, just like we knew. Now, find one other point. Here's how you find, again, are you hearing my voice? Here's how you find the one other point. Every time, just add one. I'm just, I'm just boiling this down to be as simple. You know, it used to be when I first taught this, I, uh, I taught everybody about the reflections and the movements, and I said, just do all that, guys, and it was hard for everybody. Especially, I mean, it probably doesn't seem hard to you right now. I got it. No, 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 it gets real. When they put two or three together, the order starts to matter. All kinds of gets really, really tricky. And, um, and those poor students, they, they really struggled. And then I realized, second or third time I taught the course, oh, it's much easier for them if I just show them how to find these two points. So, so really track with this. This is going to be the best thing for you. Find the center point. Find one other point. How do you find the other? Add one. Just add one to whatever that first x was. That will always work with one exception, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Negative 4 plus 5. I'm just, I'm just plugging into y equals root x plus 5. What's that? Root of 1? 1. Negative 4. Up 1. Right there. Negative 4 up 1. Negative 5 up 0. There it is. We already knew it anyway. There's the graph. But even if you didn't know, you know, you would go negative 5 up 0 is the center point. Here's the other point. Oh, it must be going up to the right. Right? Good on that? That makes sense how we do the graphs? That's what I'll ask you for on the exam we take next Thursday. Center point by zeroing out the x zone and one other point by adding one to that first x value. Plug them in, get your two dots. So, so if you didn't have any idea in the picture, you go back five, up zero, there's the center point. Back four, up one, there's the other point. Here's a common mistake I see, guys. Uh, on the test, I'll see people do a good job with the table, go back five up zero, back four up one, get the center dot, get the other dot, and then they'll go like this. I see this a lot. They'll go like that. Now, how do you know that's wrong? I mean, we know it's wrong because we're looking at this. But why, why couldn't that also be right? I mean, you've got the two dots. How do we know which way it goes? Why is that wrong? Because they, this is not the center point anymore. See how they lost sight of the center being the starter? And they made the other point the starter. So focus on the starter. The center point, it, it, they, they matter. It's not just any old two dots. That center point is the most important dot on that graph. Make sure you give him his due. He says, no, 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 I'm the center. I'm what it's all about, right? I'm the center. All right, so come on back here. So you go, oh, no, no. So he's got, so I know that you might think, I'm not going to do that. Well, a lot of students have. I'm just showing you the things I've seen lots over the years. So say, focus in on that. That's the center. So if he's the center, then you've got to start with him. Then you go, oh, okay, start with him. All right, there we go. That's wrong also, isn't it? Now, I started with the right center. This is the other mistake I see a lot. I started with the right center, and I connected through the other one. What, why isn't that right? It's got the wrong concavity. Have you ever heard of concavity? It's like the, the bend of a bowl. They'll, they'll talk about that a lot in Calculus 1, Math 5a. So I want to get your thinking that way. So um, second derivative tells you concavity of a, of a function. So, you know, later, calculus. So, um, but for now, I just want you to have generally the right concavity. Square root graphs are like bowls turned down, aren't they? They're not bowls turned up. See how that's a bowl turned up? And, this, and, and they're supposed to be bowls turned down. Meaning they're slow growth functions. Square root functions grow slowly. They go up slowly. They don't do bowl up. They don't rock it up like that, do they? No, I'd give you part. I'd probably give you three out of five if you did. I'd give you. Because you've got the two dots. You made the table. You've got the center right. But you've got the wrong concavity. I'd probably take out two points 
for the wrong concavity. So that does matter. So, no, so it's easy to remember all the square root graphs, cube root and square root, all the root graphs are both turned down. They all go sideways more than they go up down, huh? They're all slow growth. And all the power functions, third power, second power, they all do bowl up because they go up and down faster than they go sideways, huh? So is that good? Remember that, Isaac? Questions on that? So it's not, it's not that one. All right. Okay, so number 20, y equals x minus 1 cubed, minus 5. Give it a try, guys. So, so do the thing I was saying. Make, make the x, y. Don't, don't, don't look at it right away and go, oh, it's right 1, left 1, up 5, down 5, you know, whatever. Just, just make the table. That'll be way easier for you. You can always check that other stuff later as a good second check. But I would really encourage you, just find the center point. In fact, I'll ask you specifically for those on the exam. Find the center point and find one other point. So how am I going to find the center point? What am I going to plug in to find the center point? How do you find the center point? Set x in the little world to x is n to 0. Yeah, I like that. An x is little world. Exactly. you got to plug into x whatever will make his little world become 0. That's always where the center goes. Always. It's a nice, quick, easy way to find the most important point on the graph. So what will make x zone 0? Make the x zone, which is the x minus 1 cubed, right? Not the minus 5. That's outside of x's world, right? x lives in a cube root world, or cube, third power world, right? So what's going to make his little world 0? What can I plug in for x? Positive 1, huh? Positive 1. And then y will not be 0. Y will be negative 5, huh? We good? So that's the new center. The most important part of the graph, we have it that quick. So this is a powerful technique. You quickly got crucial information. Over 1, down 5. So there it is. Over 1, down 5. We good? So that's the new center point. Hey, what does this graph, gen what does a third power graph generally look like? Snake. It's the snake, right? So we have the center point. Now, how do you find the one other point? What do you always do? Add one. Add one. Just simply add one. So that'll be two. Plug in two. And it's at one cubed minus five, one minus five, negative four. Over two, down four. Right here, over two, down four. So, and you know the general look, right? We got our two dots. It must go like this, huh? Because you know the third power function is an up-down snake, huh? Cube root is a sideways snake, huh? See how that's bowl turned up, bowl turned down, a little down. It goes down fast and up fast, right? The power functions go up and down fast. The root functions go sideways mostly, don't they? Is that easy enough? You can check the other stuff. This, the negative one should have been what? Right one. Because x is opposite. This should be down 5. Right one, down 5. Yeah, that's exactly it, huh? Right one, down 5. That's where the center went. Good? Questions? Okay, so y equals 1 over 2x. Yeah, what is the, what you should look at when you say, you should think of the 1 over x graph. What does the 1 over x graph do? Remember, he's the one with the asymptotes. I always call them the crosshairs, right? The asymptotes that cross, right? And he has one branch. You know, whenever you have asymptote lines, that means the graph gets right next to those lines, right? So one branch here and one branch there. The branches are always diagonally across from each other in the 1 over x. So definitely put that one in your sure five card. So that's the basic 1 over x graph. Um, asymptote centered at the origin, right? Even this graph is really centered at the origin, isn't it? And the branches are diagonally across from each other. Now, sometimes this thing is flipped, and then the branches will be in the other two quadrants, huh? But always diagonally across from each other. All they, all they would have to do is throw a negative here. And that would flip it. And then they would be in the other two quadrants. But they have not. 
All right. So how are we going to graph this thing? Same way. X, Y table. Find the center point. Now, there's something a little more interesting here. I don't know if I've told you about this or not. Um, so what am I going to plug in for X to zero out the X zone? That's always what we do, right? Zero out the X zone. What's going to zero out the X zone? Zero. Yeah, zero. Let's plug in zero there, right? Zero. So Y equals 1 over 2 times zero. What's that? What's 1 over 2 times 0? 1 over 0, what's that? Yeah, undefined. Now, did I mention already what we do with undefined? No? Pretend it's 0. Here I am, the math teacher, saying, pretend. Let's just, it's, it's time to use our imagination. So um, we're just going to pretend it's 0. Don't, don't tell the dean that I mentioned this way. No, I'm uh, I mean, I'm not kidding. Feel free to tell the dean. I'm kidding about that. But this is the best way to find the asymptotes. Even though... You think, well, zero is not, undefined is not zero. You're right. It's not. It's not really zero, but it's really the center of the asymptotes, which is the most important point to find on this graph. It'll find for you the center. Now, this one's so easy because they didn't move them, so it kind of looks kind of looks lame. It doesn't look very helpful. When they, but the trick is when they move the asymptotes, like over, over one up three or something, you've got to find that new center, and this will instantaneously tell you where that new center is. So again, Pretend the undefined is zero. It's not really zero, but that will help you find the asymptotes. Right there, the center of the asymptotes must be at zero, zero. Now, why it's undefined is because you can't really touch a vertical asymptote. That's why it's not really a point. But it's a very important location for us to find to get the rest of the graph, you see. All right, and then do what we normally do. Add one. Plug in one. What do you get? One over two times one. A half. Why is a half? So where's that? Over one, up a half. Just go up a half, you know, halfway to one. I don't care. Good enough for me on, a, on the test. I don't care. Over one, up a half. All that means to me is there's a branch up here. And it's always diagonal, so there must be a branch down here as well. There we go. It's important information because if I'd found the dot like down there in the third, what, fourth quadrant, if I'd found it down here, that would mean there's a branch here and up there. It had been flipped, in other words. That's how you'll know. That other dot. Really, I just did a graph from one dot, didn't I? I really just did a graph from only one dot. But really, I knew what the general shape was, and I found where the asymptote lines cross, the crosshairs, and then I found one dot. So, that, and I knew it's diagonal branches. All right, let's keep going. All right, so 24y equals the square root of negative x. Try that one, guys. I need the table and all that stuff. Try to. I wish they would make it. Here, I'm just going to make one more interesting. I, you know, th since they're not giving me good ones, let, let's, I'm going to make my own. Here we go. We're not going to do that problem. Let's do um, how about 2 square root of negative x plus 1 plus 3. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's do that one. I'll, since they're not giving me what I want. We'll do that. I just took what they want and made it bigger. All right. See, so that one, I would encourage you to try that one. I mean, I would not encourage you. Try that one with all of our compression, expansion, right, left. That would be super hard. Where is that thing? Super hard to get all that straight. Just make the table. Find the center point. Find one other point. You'll have it real quick. So go ahead. Give that a try. So make the xy table. In fact, I'm just going to go to a new screen. What was it? 2 square root of negative x plus 1 plus 3? All right. Yeah. All right, yeah, but, but don't try to guess around everything. Just make the table. All right, plug it in. What x is going to zero out the x zone? Right here. Here's the x zone. Positive 1, huh? Normal 1. We good? That'll make x's world 0. And y will equal 2 times the root of 0 plus 3. y will be 3. We good? Over 1, up 3. Super important point. That's the center point. 
We've got it that quick. That's the most important point on the graph. Okay? Now find a second one. Now, what do we normally do? Here's where we're going to have my one-time exception. What do we normally do to uh, find the second point? Add one. It won't work this time. Am I, am I racing ahead of you? It's cut up. You okay? I want you to see this. Adding one will not work this time, and instead we need to subtract one. Let's see why. When you, plug, when you try to add one and plug that in, you're plugging in two, but there's a negative next to it, right? Negative is next to whatever X you plug in, and then three is on the outside. You see the problem? That's going to be root of negative one. That's no. That's imaginary. You can't do that, huh? I'm going to write no. I'm not goofing around. I, I'm really saying no. That, that's, I still need another point, but that does tell me valuable information. It tells me the graph is saying, I don't go there. I don't go that way. I'm at this center dot, and I don't go right. That's what we're, so it must go left. See what we're learning? So when that happens, this is the one exception to, to adding one will always give you a good other point. In all other cases, it will. But in this case, when it gives you imaginary, then subtract one instead of adding one. Because you have to go left. This graph just doesn't go right. So subtract one, that'd be zero. Now it'll work fine. Plug in the zero, minus zero plus one, with the plus three on the outside. What is that? Two times the root of one plus three. What is that? Five? Plus three, right? So five? So over zero up five, four, five up here. We good? And there goes the graph. Whoops, I just did a funny thing. There we go. Over zero up five, and there goes the graph. Make sense? Now, how do I know it doesn't go like this? Because root graphs are slow growth. They're mostly sideways, not mostly up down, right? It's bold turned down, not bold turned up, right? So not like that. But the way I've got it. Everybody see that? We okay? So see how much easier that is than trying to look at this and go, oh, I mean, that's left and up one and right three and times two and da 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 da. That's where everybody, that's those, what I made those poor students do the first time I taught this class. And they got all confused. I thought, ah, I'm just going to let them make a table. Is that good? Is that okay? All right. It does random, you know. So anyway, so here we go. So let's use, I, let me make one up. Y equals... 2 over 3 minus x plus 1. Yeah. All right. Let's try to graph that one. So what are you going to do? Make an xy table. Make an xy table. What are you going to plug into zero out the x zone? What is the x zone? Right here. Right? It's, it's, it's like the function 1. It's, it's imitating the function 1 over x. This is the one with the crosshairs, asymptote, diagonal branches, right? This is a, a fancy version of 1 over x, isn't it? And so x zone is whatever's under the bar. So it's the 3 minus x. So what am I going to plug into to find the center, to zero out the x zone, positive 3. Right? Positive 3. Positive 3. So, yeah, let me help you with this. So plug in the positive 3, and we get 2 over 0 plus 1, right? Now that's undefined. We can't do that. But remember my little trick. But, but, but I, you might think I'm saying something I'm not saying. My trick, my trick, let me write it so it's extra clear. Trick is undefined piece only. That's not piece. The undefined piece only. Only. Just him. Not, not the plus one, in other words. Is zero. Pretend. Just pretend. We'll pretend together. Pretend that it's zero. Because that'll help you find the asymptote. Is that on the screen? Yeah. Pretend. So what I'm saying is, 
2 over 0 plus 1 equals 0 plus 1, 1. So y is 1. Not, so I'm not saying pretend the whole y is 0. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying pretend the undefined part is 0. Whatever else is, is still there. Does that make sense? That's what I wanted to distinguish. My, my imagination doesn't go too far here. It's just the undefined part is 0. The rest is still whatever it is. Which is good to see on the easier example. That's why I had to make a harder one. Does that, does that make sense? So just the undefined part. This, this is our pretending right here. We pretend just the undefined part is 0. The 1 is still there. Now, why does that matter? Well, because that tells you where the center is. Over 3, up 1, right there is the center of the asymptote. Super important uh, point. Really helpful for our graph. Most important point on the graph. Over 3, up 1, that's where the crosshairs have moved. We had to pretend because it's, the graph doesn't actually touch this point, right? The branch will not go through that point, will it? You can't touch a vertical asymptote line. That's why we had to pretend to find it. But it was very valuable to us to find it. So now you just go back to normal. What do I do to find the other point? Add 1, 4, plug it in. I have no idea what it is. Let's see. 2 over 3 minus 4 plus 1. What's that? 2 over negative 1 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 1. Negative 1. Right? You good with all that? I'll do that too quick. We good? We happy? So I plugged in. When I plug in, I added one. So I found my center point. Add one. Plug in the four. Work it out. Negative two plus one. Negative one. So what does that tell me? Over four. Here's over four. Down one. Kind of running out of room here. Over four. Down one. There. Whoop. Come on. There it is. Over four. Down one. There's the dot. Right? Everybody see what we're finding? This is good? This is the kind of stuff that tricks people on the exam next week. I'm trying right now to help you not be tricked. Is that making sense? So again, you find the center by zeroing out the X zone. That's how we always find the center. So what made the X zone become zero was positive three. Plug that in and then I pretend the undefined part is zero, so y comes out 1. That tells me, um, over 3 up 1, the center of the asymptotes, crosshairs, right? David? When you say the center, are you talking about like um, 0, 0 when the asymptote is untransitive? Oh, yeah. Right. The 0, 0 has moved to over 3 up 1. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're doing in all these graphs. So they all are centered at 0, 0. This one just has asymptotes at 0, 0. And they all move to whatever that new center point is. This will always give you the new center location for all these graphs. By zeroing out the x zone, and in this case, pretending the undefined is zero. Yeah, it will always find you the new center. In this case, for the asymptotes. Yeah, anyway, so what does it mean that we have a dot down here? It means we got a branch down there. Remember, this one always has diagonal branches. So these branches must be here, and the other one must be where? Upper left, up here because they're always diagonal, right? Because I found a dot down here instead of up there, it meant there's a branch lower right and upper left instead of upper right and lower left. Huh. They're always diagonal for the 1 over x function. So there we go. That's, that's a lot of information quickly about that weird complex function. You've got some power at this, at this point, if you, can, if you understand all that, to look at that function and that quickly know what that complex graph looks like by just two points. Make sense? Ain't going to get any harder than that. Well, for graphs. Okay, so um, it, what it's about, guys, it's saying this is f of x, and it wants me to graph absolute value. That's what they're saying here. So what is absolute value? If f, if f of x is the pink graph on the screen here, What's the absolute value going to look like? What's the absolute value going to do to a graph? 
everything's positive. It makes all the y values that were negative become positive. The ones that were already positive, leaves them alone. So all of this part's not going to move anywhere. He's already above. So he's not going to change at all when you put on absolute values. But this part that's down here will suddenly go up here and there. Does that make sense? It'll go up. It'll be from down to up. Right? Instead of what is this negative 2, negative 2, it'll be this dot will be negative 2, positive 2. The y will change to positive, right? Because we're putting the absolute values on the f. The f is the y. So we're not changing the value of x, we're changing the value of y. We're making y positive. And this point, negative 4, negative 3, will change to negative 4, positive 3. Again, the y will become positive, won't it? That's what absolute value does. We good with that? That one's not too bad, is it? We okay? All right, 35 is bad, so let's go there. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. So, okay, the trick on this one is we're starting with um, g of x, and we're starting with negative 3, positive 3. Let me make that a little bigger. Negative 3, positive 3. All right, and they want us to go through a series of steps. Well, part A asks, what is g of x plus 6 minus 7. Where are the points, the x, negative 3, the y, positive 3, where are they going to go when you do g of x plus 6 minus 7? What's going to happen? So, based upon what you already know, what's going to happen there, guys? What's this... Um, What's, well, first of all, what's this minus 7 out here going to do? Is that minus 7 an X effect or a Y effect? Y. That's a Y because it's not in the parentheses. So it's just simply going to subtract 7 from the Y value. Negative 4. So far, so good? Okay. And then what is this? That's, that's a Y. And what is the plus? This is an X, isn't it? The plus 6 is in X's world. So it's going to have an X effect. And X always does the opposite. So it's going to actually go minus 6, huh? So that'll become minus 9, minus 4. That's where it'll move that particular dot. Like if you had the dot back 3, up 3 on the original graph, and then you do g of x plus 6, parentheses, minus 7, that dot would move to back 9, down 4 over here. That's what we're saying. Does that make sense so far? Because part B is the real trick. Now part B is going to say, okay, hope you enjoyed that one because here comes the real deal. What is y equals negative 3 g of x minus 2 plus 6? Where is that going to go? Okay, we're going back to the original. We all, we're starting over again with negative 3. They always want us to start with the original. In other words, don't, don't keep building. Don't, don't use negative. We're done with part A. It's over. Go back to the negative 3, positive 3, and do what this is saying. See if you can find the new values. I've got to do roll here real quick. And then, um, and I'm going to run out of time, aren't I? Um, yeah, I'm going to run. Yeah, I don't have, um, do I have time? Well, maybe if I go quick. All right, uh, Maria Aguilar. Maria. Maria? Yeah. Maria's here, thank you. Um, and um, Terrence. Here, Albert. So go ahead and figure that one out while I'm, while I'm doing a roll here. And um, Alexis Avita. Alexis no, Alexis. Let me just show you. The trick is, you know what the minus 2 is going to do. No big trick there, right? That's going to add 2 to x, right? So add, oh, whoops, go back to the original. And add 2, so that would be what, negative 1? Well, we're going back to the original, negative 3, positive 3. So add 2. That's not the, the, the trick. The trick is the y. What is this plus 6 going to do right here? Well, it's easy. Add 6 to y, right? Okay. And what is that minus 3 going to do? Is that an X or a Y, that minus 3? It's a Y. It's going to multiply Y by negative 3. Okay. So what? Why is that a big deal? What order? Do you realize? Maybe you didn't realize. That's going to matter. If you add 6 first, right? We're doing two things to Y. Notice. The order matters. And one order's right and one order's wrong. How do you know? 
something hard, which I've got to show you in 30 seconds. So um, we got to both add 6. I'm going to take the original y value of positive 3. Either add 6, make it 9, and then go times negative 3, make it negative 27. Or go times negative 3 first, which make it what? Negative 9, and then add 6, make it negative 3. Very different answers. The order in which you add and multiply matters hugely. Well, how do you know which one's right? It's whatever really produces the function truly. Now, what do I mean by that? Whatever you do to y, remember this, you must do it to the whole right side. Because y equals the whole right side. Not just the front part or the back part. Or it's the whole thing. Okay, so what, what am I talking about? Well, if you take y equals g of x, the original, okay, and, and I don't care about the minus 2, whatever, you know, that, that's a no-brainer. I'm just talking about the, the negative 3 and the 6, just the y stuff. How could I get there? Could I, for example, add the 6 first to the right side? Now, I'm trying to get it to look like this, right? Other than the x minus 2. We know that's there. Right? Add the 6 first? No. Because then next step, when you multiply the whole right side by negative 3, it isn't going to be 6 anymore. It's going to be negative 18 which is not true to what they're asking me to find. So it's not add first, then multiply. It's multiply first, then add. And it's not always that way. For x, it's the opposite with adding and multiplying. The trick is it's complex. You have to spend some time, and we don't have any more time. But you can tell if you take the function and you first multiply by negative 3, the whole right side, if that's all there is on the right side, then I just multiply the whole right side, and then add 6 to the whole right side, I'll get where I'm supposed to get. That's the function they asked me to find. So it's first multiply, then add. So you've got to take the plus 3, first multiply by negative 3, then add the 6. What is that? Negative 9 plus 6? Negative 3? That's the real answer for y. All right, that's tricky. I wish I had more time. I don't. So this is due, uh, these two sections, 2, 4, and 2, 5, are due on 2.